Storytelling with Mama Suranya. Today I'm going to read you a story called The Peacock Who Wanted to Fly Like an Eagle. Here's the book written and drawn by me, Mama Suranya. Little Peacock and Little Eagle were best friends. They live in a big old banyan tree in the beautiful Madhuvan Gardens. Their favorite game was hunting for worms in the grass. One day, Little Eagle came to the garden with his mother. I can't go worm hunting today, said Little Eagle, sounding very important. Mama's going to teach me to fly. She says my wings are big enough now. Ooh, can I come too? asked Little Peacock. Yes, dear, if your mother allows, said Mama Eagle. We'll be at the people tree. Little Peacock ran to his mother. Please, Mama, can I fly with Little Eagle? Please, 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 he cried. Hmm, said Mama Peacock. Let's see if your wings are long enough. All right, said his mother. After measuring Little Peacock, we can try flying. Where's Little Eagle learning? At the people tree, said Little Peacock. Come quickly, Mama. Little Eagle was circling the people tree, holding wings with his mother. Peacock's come, he cried. Tuck in your claws and flap your wings like this, said Mama Peacock, starting Little Peacock's flying lesson. Every day after school, the little birds practiced flying with their mothers. Soon they were racing each other around the trees on their own. Then one day, when Little Peacock came out to play, he saw Mama Eagle taking Little Eagle high up in the sky. First they flew a bit above the banyan tree. Then they went round and round in bigger and bigger circles, going higher and higher until they became two dots in the sky. Mama, said Little Peacock, I'm bored with just flying around the trees. Can we fly high up in the sky today? Mama Peacock looked up at Little Eagle and Mama Eagle in the sky. She shook her head and said, No, darling, you won't be able to fly so high. <laughs> but I want to fly up there like Little Eagle. Why can't I fly too? <laughs> please, Mama, please, please, please. Sorry, little fellow said Mama Peacock. But we're much bigger than eagles and the wind isn't strong enough to take us that high. Come, I'll get you a bag of chocolate-covered worms to cheer up. But you must stop crying or the sweet swala won't let us into his shop. Little Peacock dried his tears, but he still felt bad inside. The next day, Little Eagle and Little Peacock played catch and catch under the jamun tree for a short while. But then Mama Eagle took Little Eagle off to fly in the sky again. Soon all the other little birds in the garden started flying up in the sky. Little Parrot and Little Sparrow went up next. Then the Bulbul twins. Even Kalia, the crow with the bent wing, with whom no one used to play, learned to fly up in the sky. 
He looked almost beautiful with his black feathers gleaming in the summer sun. Little Peacock felt very sad and left out. Maybe Little Eagle will stop being my friend now, he thought miserably. It's much more fun to be up in the sky than down on the ground. If only I could fly too. Why, oh why can't peacocks fly like eagles? Don't be so sad, my little piku, said Mama Peacock, seeing little peacock scratching in the grass for worms all by himself. It's lovely to be a peacock. Just wait and see. But little peacock didn't really believe Mama Peacock. He just wanted to fly like an eagle. It was getting hotter and hotter. Little Eagle and the other birds spent most of their time away from Madhuvan flying over Big Lake. They said it wasn't as hot in the sky above the water. Now Little Peacock wasn't even able to watch them flying. Then one day, as Little Peacock was sitting under a bush away from the hot sun, he heard a loud dram, dram, dram from the sky. He looked up. It was suddenly dark. Thick grey clouds had gathered in the sky. They looked like the curly muchas of Ravan's ten heads, said Piku to himself. Little Eagle and all the other birds were flying back from Big Lake. They swooped silently into their nests. A zigzag streak of lightning flashed between the clouds. Tip! A fat drop of rain landed on little Piku's beak. He shook it off. Tip! Another fell on his neck. Little Peacock took a deep breath. There was a lovely, greeny, grassy smell all around. Little Peacock shivered. It was almost cold. Tip, tip, tip. The raindrops came faster now. I'd better fly up to the nest, thought Little Peacock. Mama must be looking for me. That was his mother across the garden. Okay, Mama, I'm going up to the nest now, called Little Peacock. No, don't go up. Little Peacock heard his father's voice all of a sudden. Papa Peacock was back early from work. We've got a surprise for you, Piku, said Mama and Papa Peacock, hurrying towards him through the drizzle. Little Peacock stepped out from under the bush. The rain was fresh and cool on his back. Look behind you, Piku, said Mama Peacock. Little Peacock turned his head. <gasps> and he got the surprise of his life. His tail had opened in a beautiful fan behind him. It looked splendid. Tall and strong, just like a grown-up peacock's tail. And so many colors, shimmering and shining all through. Green, purple, blue, white, yellow, orange. Breathe Piku in wonder. Congratulations, son, said Papa Peacock, putting a wing around him. You're all grown up now. Yes, said Mama Peacock, kissing Piku. Your tail is lovely, just like Papa's. Come on. There's going to be a rain dance by our tree. You will join the dancers for the first time, little Piku. While Piku had been admiring his tail with his parents, Madhuvan had filled with peacocks. They were fluffing out their tails and forming a chain by the banyan tree. Piku and his parents walked up. Piku had to step carefully. He wasn't used to walking with his tail fanned out behind him. 
When the peacock saw Piku's new tail, they gathered round him and his parents, shaking wings with Papa Peacock and patting Piku on the back before joining the chain by the banyan tree. The drummers began to beat the rhythm. The peacocks began to tap their feet in time. Then the Shenaiwala sounded a triumphant note. Now the dancing was formally announced. The peahens began to sing. Their voices rose higher and higher, meeting the sound of the drums and the pattering rain. Madhuvan was filled with music. Little Peacock took his place by his father in the chain. Suddenly, he felt a little shy. Don't worry, it's easy to dance in the chain. Just follow me, whispered Papa Peacock. I'll be right in front of you with the peahens, said Mama Peacock. Little Peacock fluffed out his tail and began to carefully copy Papa Peacock's steps. He got it right in a couple of tries and Papa Peacock gave him a proud nod. When the rain stopped, Piku's friends flew down from the banyan tree with their parents. Congratulations, the parents said to Mama and Papa Peacock. What a fine tail your Piku has grown. How well he dances. I want to learn to dance like you, said Little Eagle, giving Little Peacock a lovely tortoise shell comb. It's for your tail, said Mama Eagle. Can we have one of your feathers to play with? asked the Bulbul twins. They gave Little Peacock a box of 100 chocolate-covered worms 
with congratulations and jubilations written in gold on top. What colors? said little Kalia, looking admiringly at little Peacock's tail. I've got you a jar of feather shine. It'll make your feathers gleam like mine in the sun. Everyone gave little Peacock a present. He liked Papa Peacock's the best. A pair of silver kungaroos to wear at the rain dances. They were your grandfathers, said Papa Peacock. When they went back to their nest, little Peacock asked Mama Peacock if they could dance again the next day. Yes, said Mama Peacock. We'll dance every day that it rains. That night, as she tucked him up in bed, Mama Peacock asked Little Peacock if he liked being a peacock now. Yes, Mama, he said. I love being a peacock. So you don't want to be an eagle anymore? She asked. No, said Piku. And he shook his new tail one last time before falling asleep with a smile. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. That was The Peacock Who Wanted to Fly Like an Eagle by Mama Suranya. The book has lovely stickers and cut and paste pages for you, so go out and get one quickly. Now run along and find something else to do. Don't spend all your time on your iPad, okay? See you next week for another story. Bye now.